For two years now, I've been doing album reviews almost every week. Over this time, many people have asked me what some of my favorite artists, songs, albums are. And it's very hard to go into detail without boring the person to death, because I tend to ramble on a lot. Truth is, though, there is a lot of albums that have shaped me as who I am today, and they've really stuck with me throughout my life. So I wanted to start a series that will be devoted to my personal all-time favorite albums. These are the soundtracks that I have listened to more times than I could possibly count. It's the music that randomly gets in my head during the day, and I stop what I'm doing just to think about it. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion. I'm not going to rate these albums at the end because I feel most of them people already know enough about, and they've been around for a while. This is just my opinion and expression of some of the my favorite albums since I've gotten into music. You may agree or disagree, but just keep in mind that it's just my own expression, and this is my own personal form of a love letter to the people that made them. And to start with, one of my all-time favorite albums is 13th Step by A Perfect Circle. 13th Step was released on September 16th, 2003. I had just started my senior year of high school. I didn't get the album until October 3rd, 2003, though, because I asked for it for my birthday. If I had known how much I would have loved this album, I probably would have gotten it on release day, because I still somehow feel cheated out of over two weeks without it. When I first played it at home in my fancy Iowa stereo system, yeah, you remember those? The ones that you could see the actual disc spinning and it looked all fancy with the lights? Well, I remember putting the disc in and opening the liner notes, which folded into a long poster-like form with a single lyric from each song. When the bass line hit from the package and I was staring at the image of the blonde woman in the garden, I was mesmerized. The story of how Billy Howardell originally wanted a female vocalist for his music before Maynard James Keenan asked to be a part of it is true. To be fair, I can't imagine this album being as good without Maynard's vocals. He adds both that soothing, brooding melody as well as that loud anger and all the impeccable timing. With the opening of the package, it feels like such a transcending journey. What opens up so rhythmic and alerting becomes visceral and angry. Hearing Take What's Mine whispered at the end seals the deal for me and how perfect everything adds up in this. Like the package, 13th Step is a concept album based on the different views and experiences of addiction. Almost every song deals with the subject. It was in a behind the scenes look on the video for Weak and Powerless where they talk about how it's not specifically addiction to a substance, but just addiction. You can be addicted to falling in love or hurting someone. It's the experience of being dependent on a vice. So many times we hear songs about an artist's struggle or addiction, but rarely do we see an artistic look on the psychological side of it. That leads to the next track in the first single, Weak and Powerless. Many people claim this song to be the best on the album, and for good reason. Lyrically, the song perfectly describes the angst of addiction. Desperate and ravenous, I'm so weak and powerless over you. You can hear in the vocals just how miserable those lines are grown and exclaimed. Even in the verses hearing about sending your shoulder angel away because you have to indulge in your vice sets up such imagery for someone suffering. The fast opening guitar and the rhythm that follows into the chorus just feels like such a quick whirlwind that you want to hear the entire song over again as soon as it's finished. Which makes sense because the song is just over 3 minutes long. The music video featuring the naked woman throwing in random animals into a pit has a unique symbolism. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but I feel like in order to feed your addiction you eventually have to sacrifice the innocence of the lives around you. And all you can focus on is how weak and powerless you are to do anything about it. After Weak and Powerless, the mood drops even more with my second favorite song on the album, The Noose. After I heard this song, I was completely sold that this album was something different and something special that I hadn't heard before. Well. 
Hearing Billy and Mater chant two different choruses at the same time that both add deep layers to the song is what got me the most. The guitar work is clean and feels almost liquid in how fluid the notes are. The entire song has this atmosphere and buildup that made me feel like the floor fell out from under me while listening and the world just stopped. One of the things I enjoy about a good album is when the tracks can flow into each other. 13th Step has that distinction. From the package to Weak and Powerless to the Noose, you get a feel of transcendence. It continues on with another one of the album's singles, Blue. I enjoyed Blue for what it was in that it picks up the intensity just enough and puts you in a good mood for its very downbeat underlying message. On Wikipedia, the song is described as the perspective of someone having a difficult time dealing with the aftermath of an overdose. Listening to the lyrics, I can definitely see that comparison. It's rare I plug remixes, but the James Eha remix of Blue is excellent and adds a different electronic style to the song. It's really worth checking out. But as Blue fades away, or even as the hypothetical overdose passes away, you are slowly whispered into the song Vanishing. This song and one other are my two most played on the album. For many people this may not seem like much. Lyrically, it's short, but the song builds an entire emotion out of the same concept of disappearing. The music could not fit the mood and method more perfectly. The rhythm guitar and quiet vocals are so mellow that you just fall into the song. Vanishing for me was always one of the songs to help me calm down. Whether it was just after a long day or something stressful, it helped me lose focus in an almost hypnotic sense and put me in the music. I keep seeing images of wind blowing at night and just help put my brain at ease. When I talked earlier about the tracks that flow into each other, Vanishing and A Stranger feel almost like siblings in this sense. While anthropomorphism is something frowned upon in writing, I feel it almost impossible to resist that urge when writing about songs like Vanishing and A Stranger. And I listen for the whisper of your sweet insanity While I formulate denial a Stranger is so soft and melancholy that it's like you can actually feel your heart rate decrease while listening. It doesn't put you to sleep or have you lose attention, but the lyrics of what am I to do with all this silence just sticks in your ears as a phrase that I still today say to myself when things get too quiet for too long. The string selection behind the guitar makes the song feel like it belongs in the background of a Shakespearean play. There is instant imagery of nature when I think about this song for whatever reason, and that's saying something because I am not an outdoorsy guy. After the silence though comes the outsider. This is where the rock comes back into play and the gruff intensity that Manor James Keenan is capable of singing comes back. Lyrically, I think this song is excellent. But truth be told, this is probably one of the least played songs for me on this album. Even though it was a second single from 13 Step, and it was played on Leno, and is proclaimed as a favorite by the band, I just feel like this was a song that I couldn't completely connect with. This was also accompanied by the Bikini Band that's featured video. Nothing against it, but I didn't really see model-esque women in prison as a good match to the music. Then again, I'm a nobody with a microphone, and they are millionaires with music that changes people's lives, including mine. Then comes the perfect circle cover of Failures, The Nurse Who Loved Me. Sandwiched between the two hardest songs on the album, this cover was a great choice to highlight in an album that has songs focusing on addiction. This is one of the songs I admit I shamelessly try to sing along with and end up embarrassing myself because I don't sing nearly as well as in that whispered octave. 
One of the strengths of 13th step is when the tempo is slowed, there isn't a lack of clarity or lull in attention. I still want to hear it with the same fervor as the faster and louder tracks. The Nurse Who Loved Me may seem like an odd choice to some people, but I love it. I think it was done well, and it fits like a glove on this album. Then comes Pet. This was the song I screamed to and still blasts in my car even today. While some people love the later remix on Emotive, in my opinion, the original has a little more substance. The song Pet is one of the few tracks that doesn't focus on addiction. This song is actually about Billy and Maynard's favorite person ever, George W. Bush. I hope you can sense the sarcasm over the internet. To not go into more detail about the politically charged cover album Emotive that was released on Election Day in 2004, Pet really does a good job of pointing out the issues in a system where we hear something telling us that we're fine, and while somewhere else there is suffering on our side. The hard guitar chords and screaming play perfectly. The intensity is the highest here and everything sounds angry. I read online that one of Maynard's focuses of singing is that you should pay more attention to the emotions the music brings out in you rather than what the lyrics are singing. Pet is a great example of this. The highs and lows in the song swing back and forth so well that it's hard not to sing or scream along. Even with the last lyric being said like a psychopath, go back to sleep, the song still has a sense of beautiful anger all the way through it. You may have noticed I skipped the songs Crimes and Lullaby. While there isn't a lot to focus on with Crimes and Lullaby, I still think that they add a good break in the album while still continuing the theme. They are steady and are there for a purpose. Lullaby specifically as it leads to the closer of gravity. The final track on the album is my favorite. Both lyrically and musically, this song was always the icing on the cake for me. You can hear the raw emotion from both Maynard and Billy in this song. Written and performed by, at the time, the current and past members of the group, this song, in my opinion, embodies what a perfect circle is best at. They compose something complete and a song that is somehow bigger than the time frame can contain. It leaves a lasting effect right after you listen. The bass line that is played in this song is visceral and really resonates in my heartbeat. Hearing the guitar and the solid cymbal beats helped contribute beautifully, but it was the bass that moved the song along and that carried the lyrics to another level. The lyrics here really capture the poetic symbolism that addiction can have. Hearing I am surrendering to gravity and the unknown just haunted me as a teenager. This song was one of the few that helped change the way I looked at lyric writing. Hearing I choose to live sang repeatedly at the end was one of the few times I really broke down after hearing a song. If there was ever a song I could recommend by a perfect circle that was not on national airplay, this would be it. As I look back along the track list, I feel less nostalgic than I should for an album I've had since high school. The truth is that I shouldn't feel nostalgic at all though, because I continue to listen to this album well into my adulthood. I think this is one of my all-time favorite albums because at the time I was in, it had every element of music that I loved. That's what got me hooked on it so fast and had me listen to it over and over again. And that's what I appreciated about it most, its replayability, along with the lyrics, along with the guitar riffs, along with all the transcending tracks that go from one to another seamlessly. I loved Murder Known to Death, and I had it for years, but it never got to the point where 13th Step was for me personally. Some people like Murder Known more, and that's great, but for me there was no comparison. It got to the point that in my senior year, I would cut out a study hall just to go listen to it in my car. I would lay down the driver's seat, just lay back for 45 minutes to an hour, and listen to it. I got to the point where I finally got caught, and they told me I can't do that anymore. But that's just what the effect of this album had on me. I alluded to the fact in the speech bubbles that I've never seen these guys live, and that's one of my biggest regrets musically. I hope to someday. I don't know if they're going to continue to make a new album like they say they might or might not. Buying Down was amazing, but at the same time, I want more. I have Stone and Echo, and seeing that live at Red Rock on DVD is fantastic. Hearing it is even better. Just how good they made songs like Orestes and When the Levee Breaks and The Package. But I want to see it. I want to experience it for myself. 
I think that's one of the things I really want to make the whole experience complete for me. To hear the songs of 13 Step live, to hear Gravity live, that would just make a chapter end for such a personal thing in my life. There are now professions in music and art therapy that help heal. For me, this is what I see it as. I'm aware that using an alternative rock album as art therapy would be laughed at by the professionals in the field, but for me, this is what had helped. Somehow, in an album that mainly focuses on addiction, there is a great sense of peace here. It feels like every other month, this album goes on sale on Amazon and iTunes for only $5. I would recommend it to anyone. Whether you like Murder No More or not, I don't know of anyone who said they were disappointed by 13th Step. Again, I am biased, and this is something personal for me, but I still recommend that you listen to it.